begin to travel, find happiness in own backyard. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> we entered uh, China on the morning following the announcement of the mining of Haiphong. And uh, I must say, with a little bit of apprehension, I called a uh, Dallas boy who's connected with the Defense Department in Hong Kong and asked him what his advice was. And well, he said, well, if they've invited you, I'd have no apprehension about it at all. They'll treat you very well. And so they did. We were received with courtesy, uh, with warmth, and with friendliness. And uh, in only one instance where we exposed to any political lecturing. And, uh, Who did the lecturing, your guide or something? No, we had no guide. Uh, we were given uh, free reign to go anywhere we wanted to within the city. Uh, and my only interest mainly was the trade fair. So I took the, uh, we, the, the lecture came from one of the heads of one of the sections at the trade fair itself who called me in for a conference. I thought he was going to talk to me about minimum quantities, but instead he said, do you know what your, your uh, country has just done? And uh, I said, no, I don't. He said, well, they have mined Haiphong and uh, they bombed some Chinese ships. I said, that I didn't know. Didn't know about the Chinese ships being bombed. And he went on to give me a lecture about the mistakes that we were making in Vietnam and suggested that I, as an American citizen, ought to do something about it. And I said, well, I appreciate very much your confidence in my abilities, but you must recognize that in America, uh, the only power that any single person has is that of going to the ballot box and expressing the dissatisfaction with an administration's action to the ballot. I said, I happen to be totally opposed to the Vietnam War. But I must tell you also that there are a lot of Americans who don't agree with me, who are very much in favor of it. But uh, he went on at some length and finally I said, uh, having just read the Chairman Mao's little red book the night before, which is distributed to every visitor, I said, you know, Chairman Mao says that deeds are better than propaganda. And I've come here to create deeds, and the only deeds I can perform are not political ones, but ones of trade. And it is my conviction that uh, after the great leadership that President Nixon has displayed in reestablishing relationships with Chairman Mao and Mr. Chu Lei, that there's an obligation on the part of Americans to try to establish business relationships. And so that is the main thing that I can do. Went on some further length, and I said, well, I'll tell you what, what I'll do. Oh, he, he said, uh, you know, if you were as important as you represented yourself to be in your letter of application, then you must have some influence with President Nixon and his cabinet. And I said, well, I wish that were true. I've met President Nixon, but I can assure you that I'm entirely without portfolio and that I have no influence whatsoever. But I will be glad to convey your impressions and your remarks to my friends in America and to let them know that you as an individual, and I presume speaking for your country, which I cannot do for my country, uh, are totally opposed to America's position in Vietnam. And I said, I'll be glad to represent that as your point of view to some of my associates. And then I shuffled some papers and I said, you know, the fair is going to close in two days and unless I get to work, I won't be able to buy anything and therefore I won't be able to commit my good deeds. So with that, he wound up, and I, uh, for a moment, I didn't know whether this was a prelude to being tossed out of China or not. <laughs>